Hello, ma'am. How are you today? I'm fine, thank you. How about yourself? Good. Good to see you. So uh, today we will do module 15, uh, prepositions in, on, and at. Uh, so these are small words. They're easy to spell, but many of my even more advanced students make mistakes with these sometimes. So let's get started, see how they work, and we'll uh, learn some of these rules. So uh, I guess to begin, let's see them in action in these sentences. Uh, can you read these sentences, please? This kitten was born in 2014, on January 3rd at 5 p.m. In summer, on a, on a hot day, I was at the beach. In the afternoon, I was at an arca uh, arcade on Main Street. I'm at a bus stop on a busy street in Beijing, China. Good. Um, so what you can notice here is it's sort of a triangle. And uh, the most specific for both of these places and times are at, or we would use at for the most specific places and most specific times. And then we use on in the middle and we use in for sort of the more general uh, or the most broad uh, designations. So, you know, we would say, you know, in China, but on Main Street and at an arcade. So it gets sort of more and more narrow as you go up the triangle. Uh, so let's begin. Let's uh, continue with uh, prepositions of time. So we use in for centuries, decades, years, months, and weeks. So in the 1700s, in the 18, uh, 1980s, that will be a decade. Uh, you know, in February, in 2011, uh, in three weeks. Next, we use on for specific days. So I would say on my birthday, on Saturday, on uh, August 12th, on Christmas Day. So we use on for days or even on for the weekend. I've heard a lot of British speakers of English use at the weekend. So um, if you hear that, that's probably okay. But for if you're learning American English, we would usually use on the weekend. And then uh, for specific times, we would use at. So at seven o'clock, at 1015, at a quarter to three at noon. Uh, you have any questions about uh, this rule? Uh, no. Okay. And then for preposition of place, so those are all times. Now we have place. So we use in for country, city, neighborhood. So in the United States or in London or in the historic district. Uh, so um, again, these are wide areas. And then we use on for streets, on Main Street, on Schoolhouse Lane or on the corner. So again, a little bit more specific. And then we use add, um, at for specific addresses or locations, like at the library or a specific address, you know, 2317 Walnut Street or at school. So again, you can see here in both cases, whether it's time or prepositions of place, we get more and more specific and we go wide with within and then on and then more specific or the most specific is at. Um, okay, so that's, that's pretty straightforward, pretty basic, but sometimes uh, things can get uh, a little bit com uh, confusing. So sometimes things get, um, uh, you know, a little bit, uh, in, in English, it's never quite so easy. Um, so uh, let's read uh, these example sentences here, please. Okay, he likes to sit in the park and read the newspaper in the morning. In the summer, she, wa uh, she watered the plants in her garden. She still had tears in her eyes in the day after funer funeral. She looked beautiful in her wedding dress. Okay, um, so, so these are things where we're sort of, yeah, so sometimes we use in to be sort of inside. So the uh, so garden is pretty specific, but she's sort of, you know, the plants are in her garden, the tears are in her eyes, uh, you know, 
in the days. So uh, I just got finished saying, oh, we would use on for days, but you know, this is sort of a group of days. So you know, in these days after the funeral, she still had tears in her eyes. Um, she looked beautiful in her wedding dress, so she's inside the, the wedding dress. Um, here's another set of, of uh, examples. This also gets a little bit more confusing. Uh, can you try these? Okay. Is this shirt available in blue? The ducks were walking in a line. Our class usually sits in a circle so we can see each other when we talk. Good. Okay, so in is also used to indicate shape, color or size. So you can think of this as being sort of inside that shape, like inside the circle or, um, you know, again, it's sort of, you know, inside the color blue. Uh, so again, if you were, were buying a shirt, so oh, is this available in red or available in blue? Now, one uh, thing that I, I have some friends, you know, American speaking friends, American English speaking friends, and they would say, uh, waiting online. So, um, so I would say walking in a line. So that's sort of in that shape or in that formation. But um, I usually say, for me, I usually say waiting. I'm, oh, Micah, where are you? Oh, I'm waiting in line at the bank. But I have some friends that would say waiting online in the bank. Uh, so that, that's, uh, sort of, uh, and again, another example where more than one word could be used. Okay, uh, can you read this next set, uh, these next two? Okay, he's in a meeting right now. In selecting, a new, in selecting a new pet, it's important to look for a healthy animal. Good, so here we have um, sort of in the middle of an activity. So, you know, in a meeting or, you know, in selecting, um, you know, so that, that's... Uh, you know, so if you're in the middle of an activity, uh, then we would use in. And then this last set, we use this to indicate a belief or an opinion or a feeling. Uh, so look, uh, so read these three examples. Children believe in the tooth fairy. Mm -hmm. Are you interested in football? He's in a bad mood today. Yeah, so, so here's the feeling, here's the belief, and then here's the interest. Um, and uh, you know, I guess you don't have an opinion example here, but uh, you know, those are some examples of how in can be used in these cases. All right, now let's have a closer work on at the word on. 